Welcome. It seems we have a new recruit to the cause of global warming, and that is God, at least according to Pope Francis. In his encyclical Laudato Si, Pope Francis says that humanity's reckless behavior has pushed the planet towards a breaking point. The earth is looking more and more like a pile of filth, and that doomsday's predictions can no longer be met with irony and disdain. Uh, these are rather extreme words from the Pope, and it's the first time that a Pope has really entered the climate debate. He puts the blame squarely on a wide range of people. Generally, he claims that this is the result of our heedless worship of technology, our addiction to fossil fuels, and our compulsive consumerism. But then he goes on to be more specific, blaming the energy companies, short-sighted politicians, scurrilous scientists, lazy fair economists, indifferent individuals, callous Christians, and myopic media professionals. Of course, that very quickly led to a bunch of mudslinging against the Pope. Uh, the Heartland Institute sent a team of leading climate scientists to the Vatican to hold a pre to the Pope's encyclical. Now, this was even before uh, they knew what was in the encyclical, so they knew what was coming. The interesting thing about this team of leading climate scientists was none of them were leading climate scientists. Only one of the seven that they sent had a degree in meteorology and he is not even an assistant professor at University of Colorado but what is called an instructor which is the lowest level of academic that you can find. Senator Inhofe claimed that the Pope should stick to his job and we'll stick to ours so I assume now that the senators and congressmen will no longer be talking on moral and religious issues uh, and will stick to legislative and legal issues. He implied from his statement that the Pope has no knowledge of climate. Well, of course, nor does Senator Inhofe, who's known widely as the stupidest man in the Senate. But the Pope took uh, his guidance from his Academy of Sciences. Yes, the Vatican has an Academy of Scientists. It's made up of a broad range of people from around the world, uh, not necessarily Catholics, and include people like Stephen Hawking. So perhaps it would be a good idea for the, some of these senators to pay attention to their scientists and what they're telling them. Rush Limbaugh, of course, rushed in to uh, confirm that the, the Pope was a Marxist, forgetting him completely that Marxism rejects all forms of religion. Michael Savage, of course, went even further and uh, claimed that the Pope is now directing mankind to worship the Antichrist, which is an extraordinary statement even for Michael Savage. We seem to now have a religious and moral consensus as well as a scientific one. Just about every Christian sect has now come out in favour of immediate action on global warming and several other of the major religions have done similarly. So I think if you're a person of faith and are still critical of global warming then I think you should be asking yourself are you following your biases or are you following your faith? Meanwhile NOAA has come out with the Global Climate Report for May of 2015. It's the hottest May on record. It beat the previous record, which was last year, by a whopping 0.08 degrees centigrade. Now, normally these records are set by a hundredth of a degree, maybe as much as two hundredths of a degree, but this is nearly 0.1 degree centigrade, a difference from last year, which was also a fairly hot year. The land temperatures were 1.3 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average, a new record, and the ocean temperatures were 0.7 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average, also a record. Now let's take a look at what the changes were hemisphere by hemisphere. You can see that the northern hemisphere set a fairly major record, high temperature for this month. The southern hemisphere, also a record but only just. Now here is the distribution of temperature across the planet for May. Note that these pixels are about 250 kilometers square and there are no record cold pixels. Those would be the dark blue like the color on the far left at the bottom of the picture. But there are over 125 record hot pixels, dark red, and this is the largest differential I've seen in any one of these maps so far. You can go look at the individual uh, station records and again the uh, high temperature records are outpacing the low temperature records. Take, for example, the last year. We've had over 85,000 high temperature records set compared with less than 56,000 low temperature records set. Look, if you compare the high max 
with the high min temperatures, you'll see that just about every single case, more temperature records are being set at night than during the day. This is a unique signature of the anthropogenic global warming theory. The ratio between the high and low overall is about 50% more high temperature records being set than low temperature records. If we take a look at the Arctic sea ice, that continues its decline. It's well below any previous year at the moment and is on a pace to beat even uh, 2012. For If you look at the record for just May, you see there's been a continuous decline of about 2% per decade. Now the Antarctic shows the reverse trend. It's setting record highs and is pretty much on the same pace as 2014. NOAA has also issued the US uh, climate uh, results for May. As you can see it's sort of about an average month with the central part of the country being slight, slightly below average temperatures where the northeast much above average. The main reason for the cool temperatures in the middle part of the country is that they've had a lot of rain with records set in Texas, Oklahoma and Colorado with Kansas and Arkansas not very far behind. There's been a fairly dry period in the Northeast. A study from Texas Tech University indicates that global warming does not create new weather incidents, but it just makes them more extreme. For example, the risk of heavy rain and flooding increased uh, with global temperatures, particularly in the US. You can see here that the Northeast is particularly vulnerable to this um, with a 70% increase in precipitation, that's rain and snow. And heat waves in Australia have also been linked to the increase in global temperatures. Now, interestingly, the arboreal forests in Alaska are on the march. In central Alaska, uh, the white spruce growth rate has slowed to its lowest levels ever recorded. That means that conditions are not good for it, and that's caused by the increasing temperatures there. Meanwhile, in the western Alaska, they are growing much faster. In Western Alaska, the conditions were not optimum for them, so they had a tough time because it was too cold. Those temperatures are going up, so those trees are now growing very rapidly. And it's global warming that is increasing the growth rate of those trees in one area and stunting it in another. 